let's start with an example. Let's say we have an array of integers called numbers and we want to find the minimum number from this array. One way to do it is you create a variable called min, you assign it as the first integer and then you loop through the entire array and any number which is smaller assign it to the min again. And once we have that minimum we can process it so in this case we are just printing it out to the console. With Java 8 streams you can achieve the same thing using only a single line of code. You can say in stream of numbers dot min function. This min function though will not actually give you an integer. To extract an integer from that min function and to store it in some variable you have to call this method called get as int. This get as int method can throw an exception when the numbers is an empty array. So you have to be careful with using get as int. Other way to use this min function is to tell it that if you find that minimum, if that number is present, then perform the following operation. And in this case, we are just getting that in this variable called min. And then we are saying that whatever is min, you pass it to this function. This is a simple lambda, which we can replace it with method reference. So the same code. But you can say system dot out colon colon print ln, which is nothing but replacing the lambda with the method reference, right? So very simple. You created a stream of numbers. You asked it to find the minimum, and you're saying that if that minimum is present, if you found it, then pass that minimum to this function of system dot out. Similar to minimum, there are multiple other functions which you can use to gather statistics of that array. So you can say, get me the maximum number, get me the average of all the numbers, get me the count of numbers, and get me the sum of all the numbers. For a specific array, you'll have to keep calling in stream of numbers again and again. To avoid that, Java 8 in stream also has this function called summary statistics. So you can say in stream of numbers dot summary statistics. This will give you back an object of type in summary statistics. This statistics has the functions which will give you all the same values which we saw earlier, which is get min, get max, average, count, and sum. Let's take a slightly more complicated example. Let's say there is an array of integers and we want to find the three distinct smallest numbers from it. So in this case, we want to find 0, 1, and 2. One way to do it is we can sort the array and get the first three numbers. But if we sort the array, we are mutating the original array. So what we want to do is we want to first create a copy of that array so that the original is not affected and then work on that copy. We'll sort that copy using arrays.sort and using a simple for loop, we'll get the first three elements. I missed to add the code to find only the distinct elements. So imagine if we had one extra zero in this array, even then, since there are two zeros and I want only distinct numbers, I would still expect it to give zero, one, and two, right? So to find those distinct, we'll still have to add three or four lines of extra code. But if we are using Java 8 in stream, we can do it in a much more simpler manner. We can say in stream of numbers, get me only the distinct numbers, sort them using this method called sorted, and limit it to the count of three. And for each of these three elements, you perform this method. And the method is just printing out to the console. So this is much more elegant than the code that we saw earlier. Even though you're calling the sorted method on the in stream of numbers, the original array is not mutated. It internally creates a copy of that array and then works on that copy. It will not mutate the original array. And after doing these intermediate operations of distinct or sorted or limit, you can again call the same methods which we saw earlier, which is sum, average, count, min, and max. We have three distinct parts to using a stream. Create, process, and consume. The same example as before. The first line, we are creating the stream. The next three methods, we are sort of filtering. We are applying our logic or algorithm or process to that stream. Yes, by calling distinct, sorted, and limit. And the, in the end, we are using that processed stream 
to extract the values and do something with the values. And that part is consumption of the stream. Visually, it looks something like this. So we have an array of 1, 4, 0, 1, and 13. We are saying create it into a stream. It will create a stream of elements. We are applying distinct. So it will only allow the distinct elements to pass through. So in this case, there are two ones. So it will allow only a single one to pass through this filter. So we have 4, 0, 1, and 13 now. We are calling sort. It will come out in a sorted manner. So you'll get 0, 1, 4, and 13. And then we are saying limit it to 3. In this case, it will limit it. It will allow only the first three elements to go through and it will block the remaining ones. Allow only 0, 1, and 4. And then we have the final terminal operation, which in this case is sum, which will give you the sum of the elements that it received. And from limit, it received only three elements. So it will give you the sum of those three elements, which is five. First part is creating the stream. The second part is processing that stream using transformations or filtering. And the last part is consumption of that stream. There are other ways to create an in-stream. We already saw creating the in-stream out of an array. You can create an in-stream out of hard-coded values, or you can create a stream from your custom method for processing we already saw a few methods of these. You can say, give me only the distinct numbers, sort the numbers. You can say, pick only the first few numbers. And opposite of that is you can skip a first few numbers. You can give your own custom logic to filter, only allow elements which pass this filter. And in this case, we are saying that if that number percent two equal to equal to zero, which means that the number is even, only allow those numbers to pass through to the next one is map, which we can con given a number, it can convert it into a some other number. So in this case, it's doubling the number. And it also has this method called boxed, which will convert the primitive numbers into wrapper integers. And the third part for in stream, which is the consumption part, we have already seen the statistics of min, max, and so on and so forth. We can also say for each of the elements that you find, do some operation. We saw this earlier. If you do not want to do an operation right away, but you want to collect it, you can do it in an array. You can just say two array. It will collect all those numbers into an array. And if it is boxed, which means it's a stream of objects, which we'll talk about later, you can convert it into a list also. There are two special methods which will return only a Boolean, true or false. And those methods are any match and all match. As the name suggests, any match will return true if any of the numbers in the stream pass this criteria. So in this case, the criteria is number percent two equal to equal to one, which is if any of the numbers in the stream is an odd number, then return true, else return false. All match ensures that all the numbers will have to pass this criteria. If all the numbers in a stream are odd, then it will return true, otherwise it will return false. So until now we saw in streams, but the beauty of streams is it works with objects also. So let's start with an example. Let's say we have a list of employees and we want to find the names of three highest earning employees. Again, like before, we don't want to sort an original list. So that's why we'll create a copy of that list. We'll call the sort method for that list. And in this case, we want the highest employee highest earning employees and that is why we'll sort it in a reverse way. So in the sort, we are giving it the comparator function. We are saying compare O2 salary with the O1 salary and then sort it accordingly. Once the list is sorted, then we'll find the first three employees from that sorted list and we'll print the name of the employees to the console. To do this in using a stream, it's much simpler. We can say employees.stream not sorted very similar to the in stream we saw earlier but here it is not integers so it doesn't know how to sort our values and that is why we can tell it that please sort according to this comparator sorted comparing the integers which are represented by these salaries so you call employee colon colon get salary for two employees compare those as integers and compare it in a reverse manner because we want it to be sorted in the descending order and then 
you want to limit it to three because we only want three highest earning employees and then we do not want the employee object we want to get the names of the employee and that's why we can say map which will map the employee to employee dot get name and then for each of these three names we can say for each call this function again compared to the previous code this one is a lot easier to read and understand so the same requirement as before three highest earning employees but this time we want to ensure that the employees are still active in the form okay so let's say there is a method called is active and it will return you true or false based on whether the employee is still active yes. so adding just that single extra parameter in the requirement increased our size of the code and now this code is not readable anymore but with streams you can have the exact code as you had before and you just add a filter in the filter you can say that given an employee check if the employee is still active and the rest of the code remains the same here instead of doing for each we can also do dot collect so you can collect those names into a list a list of string which you can store in this variable called names again much more elegant than the previous code stream sorted you filter it whether the employee is active or not get the first three employees extract the names and then collect those names into a list and like in stream object stream also work in a similar manner so in this case we have a stream of objects let's say the objects are shapes so if we have some square shapes we have some circles they have certain color and the number represents their weight we can call the filter method where we say ensure that the shape is a circle so in that stream this filter method will only allow the circles to go through it will block all the squares you can again apply a filter you can say that only allow blue so it will only allow the blue circles to go forward it will block the remaining ones you can say sort by weight so it will change the order of the stream it will give you in a sorted order of their weights and then you can map it so you can say given a shape extract the weight of their shapes so now you just have a stream of numbers once you have that stream you can collect it into a set and it will give you a set as an output yes so it's a complete pipeline or an algorithm that you can write in a very elegant manner using streams and streams are made extra special because of this concept of collectors so we saw that in in stream we can use min max average and those terminal operations but in object streams we can do something extra so we already saw that we can collect the stream elements into a list we can also collect them into a set you can say collectors dot to set and you can also collect it into a map so you can say collectors dot to map where the key is e dot get name and the value is e itself there is also a collector called joining so in the earlier example where you extracted the name of the employees you can just say give me as a string join all these strings using this delimiter which is comma separated values i'll give you this output so if you have three employees named john amy and marcy i'll give you a string john comma amy comma marcy you can group a stream so in the same example of employees you can group all the employees by their department all you have to say is collectors dot group by employee dot department so it will give you a map of departments and for each department it will give you a list of employees you can even say give me the count of employees in each department group by employees department and then there is this collector called counting which will just keep a count and the last concept is about having parallel streams so all these streams are generally done sequentially by a single thread but if your stream is too large if your input list or your input array is too large you can also use parallel so you can use employees dot parallel stream or you can do employees dot stream dot parallel that is also the same thing it has to distribute the work internally and aggregate all the values or the final terminal operations together and that is actually a performance hit so the advantage of using parallel is only apparent when you have huge number of elements in your stream so typically from what i've read 
if you have more than 10,000 elements, then consider using parallel streams. But even then, it's better to measure the amount of time it's taking, amount of memory it's consuming, and then decide whether you really need a parallel stream or not. And the last caveat that I want to cover is, of course, when you are using a stream on a list or an array, and when that operation is being performed by a thread, you should avoid trying to modify that source that array or a list in some other thread yes so you have to provide the thread safety in your own source some concurrent version of lists and arrays or the source of streams that you're using so that's it about streams quite elegant and quite powerful to use thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one bye